2050, 36 years from now, you're all going to be really old 36 <laughs> years from now. There's also going to be 2 billion more people on the planet than there currently are today. That is a lot of people. That is a lot of mouths to feed. It's so much food, in fact, we have to double the world's food production by 2050. Wow, that's a lot of food. You're thinking, OK, that's all right. We can figure this out, except there's a problem. Half of the farmland between 1960 and 2030 will be gone. You're thinking, this is so sad. I came to talk about drones and wine. You're depressing me. <laughs> There's all these smart people in the room. I don't want to talk about this. So you think, OK, we can just make more land. We'll just clear land, right? But that means cutting down trees, taking out a couple endangered species. You got to spray for the bugs, and you can't have any weeds, right? Then you have. Climate change, what do you do? Enter the drones. Who would have thought drones could play a major part in humanity or actually feeding the world in the next 50 years? So typically, when I talk about drones, this is the reaction that I get. Ah, they're looking at me in my bedroom while I'm changing, invading my privacy. Look away. Or if you look on Google and you search Google Images, this will be the most common image that you'll see right when you search. What you guys probably didn't know is that 80% of all drones will be used for agriculture by the time in 2020. You're thinking, what are all these drones doing out there in the fields today? So enter Optimus Prima, as lovingly named by her fans online. And one of my favorite Shakespeare quotes, and though she be but little, she is fierce. So Optimus Prima is armed as GPS. She has onboard navigation and computer system. She has video. She has eight propellers. And most importantly, underneath her is an infrared camera. Not just any infrared camera. It's called Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, or NDVI. You don't have to remember that. You're not going to be quizzed later. Just know that it's her eyeballs. So what does she see? This is a standard infrared image of a disease in a vineyard called leaf roll. It's a nasty, nasty disease. And the only cure right now is to actually rip the vine out of the ground. There's nothing else they can do. So what Optimus Prima does is flies over, spots the leaf roll, they yank it out, could save the vineyard tens of thousands of dollars or possibly save the entire vineyard itself. This is another really nasty bug called mealybug. And mealybug, if, it, if not treated, can be pervasive and also cause huge amount of damage in the vineyard. So, but the farmers do have, to have an alternative. They spray something called, and I've got to look at this again, imidacloprid. Some in the audience with a bigger brain than mine could tell me if I'm pronouncing that right. And it's in the neonicotinoids family of insecticides. It works really, really well. It really does wipe out the mealybug, but it has a side effect. It has an impact on the honeybee. So this is um, the male honeybee, who also coincidentally is called a drone. Pretty good tie-in. I think so, too. <laughs> and when that insecticide is introduced into the colony, even in sublethal doses, you get colony collapse disorder. Terrible. I know I'm depressing you again, but I promise there's a way out. Re-enter Optimus Prima. Optimus Prima has a friends who do what's called precision spraying or prescriptive spraying. So right now, when they spot these diseases, the vineyards kind of choose the nuclear option. They spray the entire vineyard. It's sort of like treating the common cold with chemo, right? But what's next is they have drones, which is being produced right now, that'll actually <laughs> spot the disease and precision spray exactly where it is thereby spraying significantly less pesticides and ex exposing humans to a lot less pesticides as well. But let's see what else Optimus Prima can see. So this is a block of Sauvignon Blanc as seen by Google Earth. Looks dry and boring. Optimus Prima flew over this whole area, and she wanted us to focus just on that red square. And this is what she sees. 
I think it's really pretty. What you're looking at on the left-hand side, the green area, is really high chlorophyll. It's a really healthy, can healthy canopy. If you look on the right-hand side, the dark pink area, really low chlorophyll, probably not so good. If you look at the blue in between the rows, that's water saturation in the soil. You can't see any of this with the naked eye. And then presented back to the farmer and the winemaker, he said, the science, while accurate, what's most important to me? He said, is the fruit. What's the quality of the fruit? And what he told me, which surprised me, was the quality of the fruit on the right-hand side with low canopy is much higher than on the left-hand side. Because the left-hand side was robbing the nutrients of the fruit. It was taking all the sugar and nutrients away and not pushing it in to the fruit, which is where it belongs. Which is why you have to have constant, constant feedback from the farmer if this technology is going to take off. This is the canopy. I know it looks kind of like a horror flick, because it's nothing but red and infrared images. But this is the fruit zone. This is the most important part to the farmer. This is Stan. Stan is a ground drone. He's a prototype. And his job is to run around in between the rows and look for ripeness in different types of disease. So this is a beautiful cluster of Cabernet Sauvignon. The question is, is it ripe? You're like, I don't know. Is it ripe? Well, I tasted it, so I know the answer. So we took an infrared image, processed that image, and there it is, a fully processed infrared image of the cluster. And what this tells us is that if you look at the soft skins of the fruit, which is the lighter part, it has less reflectivity. The skin is thin. The meat is soft. The fruit that's not as ripe has much darker skin, and it's thicker. So what this tells the winemaker and the farmers, this cluster is about 80, 85% ripe. And if you shoot the whole row, whole row all the way down, you could tell the percentage of ripeness of the entire area. Who cares, right? Why should that matter? Well, right now, they might pick five vines that are ripe. Stop. Pick 10 over here, eight over there. Now they can get the whole vineyard to have uniform quality and quantity, which is key for productivity inside the vineyard. Wine is an amazing business. I'm not a winemaker, but I'm thoroughly impressed by them. I mean, they're artists in my eyes. They get one chance per, per year to make it right. The fruit only drops once. Right? They can't throw more seeds into the ground. Vines take years to mature, and then it takes years beyond that for the wine to be even ready. The closest equivalent would be, imagine if you're a painter. You get one set of brushes, one set of paints, one canvas and one chance per year to get it right or you're out of business. It's crazy. And then you got to watch out for the rain and it doesn't rain inside your studio, so you're OK. <laughs> this is the first time farmers can move from proactive, or from reactive to proactive. right? But with this technology, they'll have an understanding before they ever enter the vineyard, where is the disease? Where do I have to spray pesticides? Where is the ripest fruit? What do I have to do today so they can deploy their resources more effectively? Additionally, this can be applied to all different types of crops, strawberries, avocados, row crops, across the board. So you're going to leave this conference, and you're going to go home, and you're going to pour a glass of wine. And then I just want you to think. You're going to think, I wonder, did a drone have something to do with the making of this wine? And the next few years, the answer to that's going to be yes. And that seemingly small feat is going to have a major impact on the world's food supply over the next 30 years. And if we're really lucky, can make a big dent in helping the honeybees survive. Cheers. Thank you.